Hi, this is Bob Wetterman back with you talking about the reflow process as part of our series on BGA Rework a Primer. So in this section, we will be dealing with the reflow process. Heretofore, we've talked about the removal of the device, how to site, prep, or dress the location after removal, and also the placement of the device. So this is the fourth step in our series. So the reflow process is the fourth step in the process of BGA rework that we're going through in this series. So the objective here is to duplicate the original manufacturing process with a time temperature characteristic curve that is going to reflow the component onto the PCB but not damage the PCB or the nearby components. Now here again the presumption is is that we have a plastic package as shown in this photo and that the nozzle is properly sized and sits just above the board. Now with hot air systems we are actually heating through the device and we want to size the nozzle approximately equal to or a little bit less than the package size in order to reduce any potential damage or nearby damage. So when we're going through this reflow process, what we are recommending is that the operator, the technician, get in there with a flashlight and look at what's going on on the reflow process and shine that flashlight down onto the board level and see the reflow process taking shape to monitor whatever the process is that we have uh, programmed in. Now, of course, we have lots of different sources, and I indicated previously that this series is uh, taking into account or boxing in, if you will, the technology, and the technology is hot air, and uh, the package style is plastic. But we certainly have other sources. Uh, what we're showing in this particular photograph is an infrared system. And perhaps on subsequent series, we can talk about the different kinds of equipment. So before us is a time temperature characteristic curve. Um, on the uh, y-axis, we're looking at temperature in degrees Celsius, and on the x-axis, we're looking at time. So again, we're going to try to create some generic profiles uh, based on us not having a solder sample available. Again, that's the assumption. Um, otherwise, we would use a solder sample. And we would have a variety of different profiles, both for lead-based solders and tin lead. I'm sorry, lead-based solders as well as SAC alloy or lead-free solders and different boards with different thermal characteristics. So, for instance, we may have a high thermal mass characteristic curve, a medium, and a low one as well. So what we're showing here are the different zones. And again, this is a very generic profile. So we have a ramp up indication. And there we want to ramp up at um, less than 3 degrees Celsius per second. Otherwise, we're going to thermally shock components or char them or destroy the laminate. Then we're going to get into the soak or preheat zone. Uh, getting at about 150 degrees C to 170 degrees C, and we're going to let the flux activate as well as the board coming up the temperature. Then we're going to go through liquidus, and again, for SN63, indicated by this blue line, that's at uh, 183 degrees Celsius, and then the lead-free solder alloys, 215 to 225 range. Um, and so we're going to, on the lead-based solders, we're going to be above liquidus for 45 to 60 seconds, reaching a peak below which the component will survive. And so we'll be at 240 or so for lead-based systems, 250 to 260 for lead-free systems. Um, also with lead-free systems, we're going to be above liquidus for 60 to 90 seconds, a little bit longer than the lead-based systems. Once we've reached uh, that time, then we are going to ramp down. And so that's the BGA rework process. Then we're going to program our source and monitor our source as we go through the reflow profile. We're going to put a kick or a mole or from the uh, thermal coupling system 
from the, the BGA rework station and monitor that. And these different colors represented on this graph will monitor uh, different locations. Typically, we're sitting uh, underneath the package, uh, on the package, and nearby components. So we're going to program our source, that's the rework station, to reach the target conditions that we set up and learn from as part of the removal process. If we have a solder sample board, we're actually going to go through and make sure each of the thermal couples is measuring the proper temperature time characteristic curve. So this process, that is to say, taking a device off, cleaning or prepping the site location, putting it back down and reflowing the device for a flux only attachment for plastic package, you should estimate somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes and add another 10 or so minutes for paste printing um, or totally for the stay in place stencil approach 15 minutes. So low end 15 minutes for the stay in place approach, another 10 or so minutes added to that, a total of 25 minutes for flux only attachment, and then a total of about um, 30 to 35 minutes for paste printing. So first pass yield of flux only attachment, we would expect to have 90% first pass yield. That is the first time we've replaced a BGA and 95% or greater for solder paste. After doing thousands and thousands of them in our shop on a specific board and a specific board type, you know, we typically are approaching in the 98% first pass yield area. So this has been the BGA rework a primer section on reflowing a BGA. We've talked about developing a reflow profile um, and we've talked about the different uh, methodologies to do that depending on the type of alloy that you're using. So join us next time for a section on cleaning. Thank you.